uh, why don't you launch a company? Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, thank you, James, for, for saying yes when, when I randomly emailed you a week before your conference and said, can you fit me in? And you said, yes, I will. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, today uh, I'm uh, previewing um, a project that I've been working on with a lovely group of people called DotMesh. Um, and dot mesh is all about bringing data into the circle of control. And the reason that you want to do that is to make software development more sustainable. So before I tell you about the circle of control, let me paint a picture. Um, many of us here are software developers. We know what a bad day at work looks like. And I'm going to characterize a bad day at work uh, in terms of three memes that I've completely butchered off the internet. So, the first one is that your tests pass in CI, and then it blows up when you deploy whatever change you made into production. Um, this is a common problem, and it's often caused by production just being different to all your other test environments, however hard you try. Um, production has different data, it has different scale, it has different inputs, and all of those things often work against you um, and cause systems to fail however hard you test them. The second problem is, um, I'm sure people know this XKCD, I've modified it slightly, um, because I believe that in 2018, the number one programmer excuse for legitimately slacking off is no longer that your code is compiling, because compilers are faster now than they used to be, but because your integration tests are running. And I've seen many um, companies and workplaces where uh, there's just a struggle to ship things fast enough. It, it's often difficult to get stuff out the door. And when you look closely at those situations, it's often because there's a slow or flaky CI system at the, at the center of, uh, of, the, of the problem. Um, and the third one, this is kind of funny, you do not simply capture the state of four microservices at once. And the reason for this is that there's this thing called polyglot persistence, which is developing as a result of the explosion of microservices. The microservices rhetoric says that you should capture, uh, that you should have a different data store for each microservice that needs to handle data. And that's wonderful because it means you don't have to coordinate schema upgrades and things like that across all of your different microservices. And it doesn't, it means that your teams aren't tied together. Um, but what it ha does mean is that it's now become so hard to actually take a snapshot even of a development environment across multiple different um, uh, across multiple different microservices at the same time, that no one does it. You just say, like, oh, can you come and look at this problem on my machine, or can you SSH into this system, or we have a shared staging server, and we try and get the problem state up there. So um, it's that third one uh, that I'm going to focus on in a minute, but what I want to draw out of this is this idea that we have problems at all different stages of the software lifecycle. Um, we have problems in production because production is different to all the other environments, so it's hard to test. We have problems in CI with slow and flaky tests, especially the tests that are closer to production. The more end-to-end -end integration -y tests are the ones that tend to be slow and flaky. And then you have this problem in dev where it's actually just hard to capture and share states of microservices apps. So what's the common theme between all of these problems? Well, I'd like to propose that the common theme is that you weren't in control of your data. In all of those cases, there was data that was different in environments that made it hard to do the thing that you were trying to do. It got in your way. It slowed you down. And I want to propose this as an extension of an um, industry trend that is already happening. So there's this huge industry trend towards, um, well, decades ago, frankly, bringing code under control. Like version control is obviously all about version control. And if you said, do you version control your code? The answer is obviously. Um, but more recently, uh, the, the rise of CI and automated testing means that um, code is increasingly under control due to those things as well, testing the different inputs and the way that you, that you run your application. Um, Secondly, and this is a more recent phenomena, is that infrastructure is being moved into the circle of control. And things like um, Terraform, uh, Ansible, uh, Docker, and Kubernetes are all about turning things that used to be um, uh, messy, stateful things, like Snowflake servers that you set up by SSHing into, and turning that all into a system of declarative config and 
uh, much more reliable systems as a result. And so what I'm proposing is that we need to also bring data into the circle of control. Um, and that by doing that, we'll actually sort of close the loop on uh, a lot of software development problems that are, that are currently difficult. So how do you do that? Well, I'd like to propose that you do it with a mesh. And a mesh looks a little bit like this. Um, there's a thing in the middle called uh, the dot hub, and then you have different um, environments around the bottom here. And once you have a mesh, you can think of dot hub kind of as a, a sibling of your version control system. It's like a version control system for your data. And so you can start with a developer with a, with a data dot that has some state and push it to the dot hub, and then a different developer can clone that down. OK, simple. Um, you have uh, CI can be the source of data, because there can be failed CI runs on these end-to-end -end tests that use real databases. And that CI can push failed uh, databases, push the state of failed tests up to the dot .hub. And then you can then later pull them down in a development environment so that you don't have to like, stop the world when the CI server stops working or the CI system stops working and manually SSH into the test runner to figure out what went wrong. Um, then, and this is more in the future, uh, being able to grab realistic data from production and, and distribute it to your environments. You might want to be able to take an hourly or daily snapshot of your production state. And notice this is the entire state of your system, all the different microservices, and pull that down into the dot .hub and then distribute it into your CI system for tests uh, or your staging system. So I'm going to do a very quick demo. Um, I got this demo working at 8 AM this morning, so wish me luck. Um, and here it is. So um, we've got, um, let's suppose that we are a back-end developer, and we've just logged in to GitHub, and we're looking at the issues that are, that are um, there in GitHub. Now, this is in a post.mesh world. So we now have, hope you can see that. Um, it says, a regular user uh, managed to set the default image for all new users on, this, on the app that we're working on. There's a reproducer, um, and uh, that's a link to the dot .hub and a link to GitHub. Um, and uh, it says, to reproduce this problem, register as any new user that doesn't exist in the snapshot. So what you can do is you can go to dot .mesh, uh, you can go to the dot .hub, you can find the branch, um, and then you can, in here, hopefully you can read that, you can do uh, DM clone um, from the hub and copy that. Um, snapshot down from the hub into your local development environment. So what we're doing first is we're pulling down the snapshot of master. Um, then we do a DM list. So we see that we have that, um, uh, that, that state has been pulled down. We can do a DM switch, just, which just makes the Moby counter app um, dot, the current active dot. We can do docker compose up minus D. Um, so notice that we have uh, the docker compose um, captures the state of the code and dot mesh captures the state of the data, and we're sort of bringing them together. And then you can see that there are these three different containers that are running on that one data dot. Now, the interesting thing about this Docker Compose file is that there's actually three volumes defined that all sit inside one data dot. Um, and that's uh, marked in here with the dot between the volume name and, um, and the sub dot name. And, um, so then we can pull down uh, the issue that was referenced. And um, notice here that it, it only pulls down the delta from, one, from the original one that we pulled down to the next one. Um, then we've got the app running here. And um, it says click to add logos. And then if we um, do a checkout of the Pirates of the Caribbean branch that was referenced in the issue, um, then we can reproduce the, the, the problem, which is that when a user logs in, um, someone has hacked the app. And we have a bunch of pirate flags. So this example is a stateful application um, that has three different volumes associated with it. It has a Redis for storing the position of the clicks on the screen. Um, it has a Postgres for the user's database. And it has just a file system for uploading the images. And the interesting thing is that we were able to capture all three of those in an atomic commit and share that state as a sibling state of the code so that you can capture the data as well and move that around in a development environment. So that's the demo. 
Um, I just have one more thing. Um, I uh, wanted to use this opportunity to open source the code. So um, if we go over to um, GitHub here, then um, I loaded this up earlier. We have um, dot mesh io slash dot mesh. Um, and I'm going to go and click the open source button, not the delete button. <laughs> so I'm going to make this public uh, dot mesh io slash dot mesh. Three, two, one. Oh. And if the Wi Fi holds out, then dot mesh, dot, dot mesh, dot mesh is now um, open source. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, James. I hope that wasn't too long. Um, I just have one more thing, which is that I know I already said that. Um, <laughs> Please come and check it out on GitHub. Uh, there's also the preview URL. Um, we are officially, officially launching this to journalists and the like next Wednesday um, or Thursday, I forget. But if you want to check it out in the next few days, please do go to dotmesh.com slash preview. We're desperate for feedback because this is the first time we put it out there. I really want to know, the whole team wants to know whether people think this is completely batshit crazy or if it might actually be useful. Um, so please, please, please come and try it out and uh, give us feedback. Thank you very much, James. <laughs> Thank you.